Welcome back. This is the second of four videos on how to use MusicQuest Lesson Composer. And this video is focused on how to create your very own lesson. So when we start, we're going to get a whole set of parameters here, just like we would in Pro Mode in MusicQuest. And we're making these decisions as the instructor. What tempo do we want this lesson to be taught in? What time signature? Maybe we're going to be focused on uh, some elements of 3-4. We have our key and our scale. Notation. Uh, you also can set up the environment with parts, right? So maybe you anticipate that you are going to want students to record their voice, but you're actually not going to have a bass instrument. And if you need more melody pitches, for instance, you can make that adjustment right here as you get the started with the lesson. And when you click done, you'll enter the actual creation mode. You'll see we don't have a bass part. We do have an audio recording. We're in 3-4. We also have these chord drop downs here that we can control to uh, further influence the pitch schedule. And there's this sneaky little functionality where you can, again, long press on this chord drop down. Excuse me, let me say done there. And then long press again. Now, here you can adjust every single pitch in your lesson so that you're putting the notes in that you really want and you're uh, getting the right type of musical sound or for whatever your learning objectives are. Once we're here, it operates much like MusicQuest in that you start by selecting an instrument and then tapping and adding notes. The difference is that you're doing it with the intent of a teacher. And you can see that these last notes are actually sort of the suggestion notes that your students interact with when they're playing with the MusicQuest app. So you're now creating the suggestion notes. You can also double tap to bring students in with a pre-filled note. So if I wanted them to fill out a few, but also to have some already existing, then I can do it like that. Of course, adding measures still works the same. And we're starting to write our very own lesson here. The next step is to add multiple tasks. And here's one of the ways you know we're going to be continually improving and supporting you, improving the application, supporting you. This toolbar is going to look a lot prettier when you're using it in just a few weeks. Uh, so that's just one of many improvements that are coming along with a new set of instruments. But this toolbar is where you have a lot of your creator functionality. The One of the things you can do, for instance, is record a voiceover. This is the first voiceover for this lesson. Excuse me, I missed my tap there. But if I toggle off that, then it'll save that voiceover. I can play it back. This is the first voiceover for this lesson. Excuse me, I missed. And then I can tap. also re-record over it. This is a re-record when I don't miss step or tap. And that's going to be a lot cleaner. There's an import voiceover functionality as well. If you prefer to record on your computer or with a microphone, this is probably going to be uh, an even easier way to ensure a high quality uh, narration. And uh, you can do whatever is most convenient for you. Ultimately, what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to save and give this lesson a title. Uh, let's call it Jacob's uh, there it is, demo lesson. Just like a Word document or any other document, it now exists as a file within MusicQuest Lesson Composer. We have it saved. We have our first task. This Add More button is going to bring that dialog back up, and it's going to allow us to then write a new task. You'll see a little screen flicker there, not an issue, just uh, kind of how the technology works. So I'll add a second instrument here in my new task and uh, again, can record my voiceover if I'd like. I can also, let's say I just save this really quickly. I can run it now to see it from the perspective of a student so I can record test over. it to see this if I'm really accomplishing my don't learning objectives. Step or now you'll see those suggestion notes I've added also, the solid notes I've created, and if I go through and build the task, I'll move on just like I would in a music class lesson. And there's the second task that I've created. So you can see how a lesson can start to come to life very, very quickly. I exit out, it's back in my recent lessons, I can re-edit, open it, and if I'll go back into task two just quickly, because we'll go to the task view in our next video, uh, there's a few more pieces of functionality here which are a little bit more advanced. Um, the most helpful one is going to be insert, which allows you to add a task before the 
current task or after. Uh, if you want to add, uh, if you're sort of doing those fine-tuned adjustments, of course, add more will simply add a third task where you could, again, edit the song that a child is making or add new instruments as needed. Lots of settings can be adjusted on a task-by-task -task basis as well. For instance, um, the mixer could be used if you wanted to make a le mess lesson on mixing, where you can bring down the volume for different instruments on a task-by-task -task basis. We'll get to validation and replication in a future video. So ultimately, this is what lesson creation is like. It's very similar to making a song in Music Quest. You just have the additional intent of being a teacher. You have some additional functionality, and uh, it's really fun way to uh, ultimately uh, enable interactive experiences for students and give pe to people around the world a really high quality way to create and learn. So thank you for joining us in this mission. Next time we'll be talking more about this task screen, what's going on here and how we categorize lessons, and then we'll finish with the most advanced functionality in the application.